Instead of making the ship faster, how about installing some seatbelts? Seatbelts are dead weight. I feel the need for speed. Yes, but I feel the nafty for safety. Oh, fuff. Continuing to work on the seat belts and harnesses for the TJ here. Bought some nice uh, class 10.9 metric hardware uh, for the seat belts. The whole point of this is to have a high grade bolt to hold the seat, the belt to the seat so that things don't move around. We're going to try using some factory holes that already exist uh, and uh, making some adjustments where necessary to possibly open up uh, factory holes to make them work. If that doesn't work, then the fabrication will get a little bit more complicated as we go. Different problem there. So pull the driver's seat back out of the Jeep so I can access this hole that's on the on the seat frame. This is the hole I'm going to try to use for the seat belt. The other hole that I might use for the same purpose is back here, uh, and it's actually in line with the bolt that uh, actually holds the seat to the adapter. Um, both of these seem like reasonably good choices uh, for everything. Just a matter of what's going to work best, work easiest, uh, in terms of getting everything hooked up and in approximately the right place. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, both of the holes that I'm thinking of using. That way I've got the option to work with either one once we put the seat back in the Jeep. So looking at this from the perspective of the seat belt base, this hole here, and this hole here, are the two on the back that I opened up. I'm thinking those are the easy ones to use. This is the other one here. The challenge with this hole is that its counterpart over here on the other side is has a rivet in it. I think if I end up using that hole, I will probably actually end up using the hole here that is used to mount the seat base on the other side. But that is the hole, that is the a thing that the bracket for the adapter actually attaches to. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up in case I have to use it, but I am kind of thinking that it might be better to use the bracket, seat bracket itself as the mounting, but that'll require, again, hardware I don't have because that's going to make me a longer bolt for that than the factory had. So my idea is if I just bend this bracket 90 degrees, it would sit up alongside the seat or up alongside the seat. So I'm just going to measure it in to where the hole lines up. Now this one is slightly further back in, so I'm going to line it up on this hole and then mark where I want it to bend. And then I will go over to my vise and make a nice 90 degree bend out of it. I don't want to just grab it up here because I'll break stuff and it won't bend where I want the bend to actually happen. Yeah, I want to bend it back. We're now to the point where I have to do this. I'm 
And with that, we have a nice 90 degree bend. 90 degrees may have been a bit too much. Might have been just a little bit more than I actually wanted for this. Although, and again, well, that works really well for that one. A little bit more than I may have wanted for that as well. Okay. Well, this is the position we're going to try first. So we'll set that there. And then I need the strap from the harness, like so. And now I need a bolt. weight on these seats was 11 pounds per box but I'm sure the base is probably twice that well, the problem here well, we see with trying to use that location is that we have interference between this bracket which is hard mounted to the Jeep to the cage to support the factory seat belt retractor and the br uh, bracket for our harness. So it's pretty clear that location is not going to work. We're going to have to move the harness forward and, and use this uh, position that is common to the seat adapter for the PRP seats. I think this goes back to PRP acknowledging that getting this to work with factory seat belts is not an easy thing. So as we feared, the seat belt doesn't, is not going to work for us up here on this rear tab, which means for all intents and purposes, this rear tab could just be removed because it provides in this configuration, no, no value, kind of like this cable tab that's here, uh, no value for us. We opened up the hole that's in this to allow for our 12 millimeter bolt to come through and we can see it's loose. Even though the seat bolts have been torqued back down, this bolt is still floating in this space. So it has enough space. However, our flange bolt that we were originally using has a little bit thicker head with the flange on it. It does not fit in this location. So one option would be to tack weld that bolt so that it can't move. But you see it is right underneath the adapter and therefore it's not there. Another option would be to come forward and you know drill a hole in the adapter uh, on this you know on the bottom of it. I don't think on the side would work very well. Um, you just end up with things but here on the bottom. However when we go to the other side that same bolt is this rivet right here. Now that gives us a couple of possibilities to think about. Certainly at the moment, there's this bolt right here that holds the slider onto the uh, mount or onto the bracket for the TJ. The problem is this is going to be stationary and this is going to move. So as the seat slides forward and backward, the relationship on this anchor point would be mobile. I think what we're going to do is that right here, we have the counterpart for this bolt that is our uh, adapter mount. We're gonna come up with a little bit longer version of it that will allow us to mount the seat here uh, and work that through. Now, there's not a lot of extra length because we're right on top of the slider here. Uh, so that the length of that bolt is gonna to have to be exactly what it needs to be. But I think that's gonna be our best option for mounting the uh, four-point harness on this side. What is this, try number 372? Something like that. Okay, so the one closer to you. Passenger side. Okay. 
Okay, off. Yeah, those are about to become that service. Okay. Never used one of these rivnut rivnut uh, insertion tools. You've only done it the uh, hard way with a nut, a bolt, and a uh, couple of the couple of wrenches. This is a much much simpler, and I would even argue better way of doing these because they go in straight. And they go in fast. And now we don't have to crawl underneath the Jeep every time we want to take the console out. Our jumbo jumbo washers go. Huh. One of those is twice the thickness of the other one. I don't think it'll matter. No, it doesn't. We're now at version four of our attempts at figuring out how to deal with the harness. I think the best answer is going to be drill a hole right about there. Drill a hole in the, the bracket to give us a place to mount the uh, seat belt brace. And we'll just put the adapter in here with that in place. It's going to be captive underneath the seat when this is all said and done. And he's just reusing factory hardware here. Okay. Uh, we need the other seat. nuts were on the inside. Well, that's what I was asking. Loosen these up just a hair. I need a 13 millimeter wrench. As before, we see this is still floating, even though it's inside that area with the head. So, arranging this so it's going to be in the right orientation, and sliding it in so it'll coexist with our seat belt. Now, this nut is in a place you can't put a wrench on it. So, I just wedge a screwdriver in here so that the Nut can't turn.
this to be able to rotate. So that when you pull that over, it's not completely uncomfy. still tumbles. Not as easily as it once did before since there's no side lever, but if you know how, it will still tumble forward.